All right, guys, so my travels has led me down to Neosho, Missouri. <laughs> and I am here at uh, Neosho Industrial Supply, correct? And I am with uh, Patrick, Patrick Dwyer. And I'm at his shop, and we're looking down at his place right now. But he is also a machinery dealer as well. He's got a lot of used machinery that he deals with. And that's, that's the reason why I stopped by. Uh, one of my viewers, uh, Ross, let me know about this place, and I wanted to stop by, meet Patrick, and just see some of his machines. And I think some of you guys might enjoy it too. He's got a lot of big iron, he's got a lot of machines, he's got a lot of big machines, so we're going to go take a peek at a few of them, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy, okay? Well, we just stepped into uh, one of his warehouses here, and uh, we just started taking a peek at some of the machinery. I'm seeing a lot of nice-looking iron around here, Patrick. There's a lot of nice looking iron. <laughs> Got a standard modern Canadian made. This one lacks a motor, but it's gearhead and it's all metric. Okay. Another surface grinder. I've got a, yeah, and it's a, when I say it's nice, I'm not doing the salesman thing, but uh, this is actually a, a nice KO Lee. Okay. Is that that one looks like automatic? It is. It? It's, it's okay. hydraulic, left, right, in and out. We've got a Bridgeport head mounted on a Cincinnati. I'm keeping this one. Is this some kind of? Oh, this is a lathe pushed up against a saw right yeah, there. Yeah, that's actually more of a more of a polishing lathe. Okay. This is a brand new Fortune lathe. Brand it's new in the crate. Brand new in the crate, got a delivery sold, we got to deliver it. We're dealers for the Fortune line. And um, this is a start right saw. We need to do a couple little things too, but it's a 36 inch um, variable speed blade welder. So is that made by Kalamazoo? Um, actually, Kalamazoo bought start right, and that's an English. Uh, company okay so I don't know if they were made ever made by Kalamazoo but I know they bought them and uh, start right I believe is part of the 600 group now okay I've got a hydraulic press here I've got a 16 inch do all saw um, I want to show you this <laughs> this beautiful <laughs> okay. uh, Swedish made okay uh, the ram goes up and down at a at an angle about a 30 degree angle the head swivels it's a gear head 40 taper Power feed, That's gorgeous, different. gorgeous machine. It does have an overarm support, so when you run this head up full horizontal, that you've got a horizontal mill. Okay. But uh, makes it nice for <clears throat> angle milling, long things, slotting, and of course even drilling for that matter. That's a neat machine there. Not got that. a used Excello, uh, Canadian-made machine. They're not in business anymore. Uh, this one's got a riser block on it and a 40 taper. Most of them are R8s, but this one's got the 40 yeah. taper and it's got the extended Y axis. I believe they get a full uh, uh, 14 inches by uh, 28 inches on that one. This do all saw is, uh, <laughs> it's nice. It's, it's, I got some junk in here, but I got some really nice machines, and that's one of them. I like this one here. Roll in, one of my favorites. Yeah. Very versatile. Yep. So, uh, got that now I'm gonna kind of show you some of my other nice junk okay uh, is this a big grinder here this is a big grinder this is a Gallmeyer Livingston I'm gonna wow, that's take a, some of this off there and show you this is actually an 18 by 48 grinder okay it's probably a 40s model um, and if you'll notice it actually says 18 by 48 by 17 that's the model number that they actually called it in that day okay so uh but anyway if a guy needed a big grinder for the cheap i could probably make him a deal yeah there's another big one right there mm -hmm. i've got a logan turret lathe notice there's no compound you do have slots front and back so you could do front working back turning forming and uh, manual indexing of the of the turret with turret stops call it closer and three jaw chuck inco uh milling head laying there. i got inco milling i've got several of these but i have some uh, uh and they're they're like new uh but uh, i'm gonna mount it to some older mills that have good bodies but terrible okay uh terrible heads but good bodies 
That's most of the. Oh, there's a grinder I want to show you. I can make them a killer deal on this. This one right here, you yes. can make a good deal on. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. These are nice, rigid machines. They're too. super rigid. They are heavy. Is that a that, fifty? You know the, the yep. uh, yeah, that's fifty heavy. taper. The downside of this is you have you're limited here. Right. So yeah. we've got another probably five six inches of travel there, and maybe a foot. So eighteen inches, and by the time you get a drill chuck in there, yeah. You can do some, you can't put very long drilling, it is the problem. This head actually goes up and down too, I forgot. Yeah. You got a little slide here. So we're down on that, let's see. Is this a, a Kalamazoo saw here? That's a do-all. Do-all, okay. Yeah, and it's uh, Yeah, now I see it. They're, they're hydraulic and they just they just keep <clears throat> running and running and running. It's, they're kind of amazing, really. Uh, Our do-all saw was uh, great. Never you know, gave I us mean, any problems. I mean, Duo made all types of saws. They made some ones that were very, uh, um, like that one over there. It's just a big capacity plain saw. Yeah. You know, but but this one, you know, it's hydraulic. It's got the hydraulic feed and all that. Mm -hmm. Now here's the grinder. I'm normally not a big jet fan because they, you know, they change suppliers so often that there's no continuity for feed. But this was a Taiwanese made um, grinder. It's built on the kind of a brown and sharp copy in that the, it's a column, the column travels, not the table, not the saddle, little saddle, but this whole column travels. So you got much greater stability, better vibration dampening. Wow, so this is fixed in, in the fixed Y position? The, exactly. Okay. And so the whole column moves and, and uh, just like, in the same way that the traveling column brown and sharp, so why people like those, uh, they just had such a huge contact surface for like I said, vibration dampening as well as uh, stability and alignment. Okay. And uh, so even though this is a jet, this is a the by design, this is a, a very nice machine. Okay. Here's a beautiful Okamoto surface grinder. This is a six by eighteen. That's right. And man, that one's in great shape. With two axis digital readout. Yep. And Over wheel dresser. Right here next to it is a Davis key seater. We had one just like that. Ours was a number four, I believe. Get back here, some more, some more machinery. Oh, there's that big boy, uh, Bridgeport. Bridgeport Series Two. It's in quite nice shape. The heads on the other side. This one was unique in that they allowed you to have a Series One head on one end and a Series Two head on the other. Okay. It's very low hours, and the, all the scrapings are basically perfect that's a nice big mill it is 40 taper four horsepower head 11 inch table by 58 one actually two this is a um, a broaching yeah. machine and, yes, and then he's got another key seater right here as well you know which one that one I, is i don't know if that's a morrison yeah or that. that's a morrison yeah, yes morrison okay cool but he was uh, he was pointing out that big one right there. I wasn't sure, but that's a, a broaching machine there. Turn me on. Oh, okay. When your father's an industrial hoarder, you get to have lots of playground equipment. <laughs> you definitely get to scoop it up, man. You got a lot of stuff around here. Look at this. Look at this buffalo drill press right here. I mean, stuff like this, guys are going to be seeing these videos and like, hey, what about that machine? You didn't say anything about that, <laughs> yeah, you know? Exactly. Is just stepping into one of his other warehouses where he keeps some of the other heavy iron. You gotta let the some of the lights warm up. But I'm already liking what I'm seeing here. <laughs> you got a lot of machines in here, man. Yes, sir. Got a lot of radial arm drills. Yeah. Punch presses. Got a press break. We just we just we just redid the ball joints and the screws on this press break. Got an OKK horizontal mill there, plain horizontal. Got a big OKK. I've got uh, Wells Index. Actually has the Wells Index head for driving the horizontal spindle as well as the vertical spindle. These seem to be pretty popular. Yeah, and it's you got your horizontal spindle here as well. Yep. yep. So got Cincinnati. A, lay there next to it yeah actually that's a that's a later model one and uh, it does have the cam lock on it uh, the green paint looks like hell I'm just getting ready to paint that okay so value will go up but but if you look at the ways they're actually quite nice and then you see the lead screw 
has a finer pitch on it, which yeah. is kind of the mark of a more precision machine. Is that one of the hydro shifts? Um, I'm going to say no, uh, but that is a 1470. Okay. I thought it said hydro shift on there, so I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe they all were. You have to excuse my ignorance on that. No worries, man. Yeah. So I've got a quarter by 12 foot shear. It's a German made. Um, everything works immaculate on it. We had to put a new put a new pump on it. This uh, uh, <clears throat> made by uh, Cincinnati. 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 Yes, sir. I know that I know that was uh, that was something I learned. A friend of mine's got a horizontal. I think it said Cinti Mill. It was a it was a horizontal. That's uh, was it Cincinnati Milling Machine Company? It, uh, there was there were several Cincinnati uh, companies there. There was right. A, Cincinnati milling machine, Cincinnati shaper, Cincinnati, I forget what, but there were several yeah. of them that were all Cincinnati and they were machine tool builders, okay. unaffiliated. And then of course, then it became Cincinnati Millicron. Okay. Kind of consolidated several of them. There's another small uh, brown yeah, and sharp. That's a five by 10 brown and sharp uh, MicroMaster, I believe. Okay. And uh, again, that one has the uh, traveling column on it as well, What is what made the, okay. the brown and sharp. Next to it, I have a 12 by 24 brown and sharp all right, we'll get back there. Traveling column. Here's a nice little lathe. This is a this is a Zubel, Spanish made. Zubel, never yep. seen one before. It's gearhead, um, beautiful. It's a 15 by 60 inch L taper. I've got the look at the steady. I mean the taper attachment. Oh, it's very nice, but. I've, yeah. Got the change gears for it, inch metric. That's cool. So you can take it loose and slide it off out of the way, huh? Yes, exactly. Okay. So it's nice and out of the way, but it's also nice, nice robust. Yeah. Uh, steady rest there. Yeah. Nice. Goes this one it goes twenty six hundred RPM. Oh, okay. You get your head, so you get the torque and yeah. you get the RPM. Okay. So. Uh, I see a, a Monarch. You're gonna see a lot of them. So. This, this is, is a, about uh, a 14 or this is a 12 um, okay well the swing is actually 14 and a half but the catalog number is called a 12 inch ckk okay. when they add the extra k's on the end that's uh for more precision it is an older machine it says uh 41 model okay october 1941 i've got a couple little handles missing off it and it's got a little wear it does have cam lock on it okay i got a so this is another monarch, another monarch right here. here yes yep and i see a and I got a whole bunch in the back. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to slip back there to where you can see them. All right. That's a Lodge and Shipley right here. Yeah, a New, newer. A lot of people don't realize what a fine machine a Lodge and Shipley is. It's. Uh, I always thought they were kind of a step above uh, some of the others. Dirty, greasy, and uh, when you do put a flashlight on, the ways are really nice on it. <laughs> oh, look at that granite. Look at that granite plate right there. Yep. That's a big boy. Looks like 12 inch thick. Here's a 47 Monarch 14C, 14 by 30. Okay. Yep. Cam lock. Um, here's a 13 inch Monarch with an actual 15 and a half inch swing. And this little bar here, you know what that is, right? That's for uh, lead screw reverse. That's right. That's yeah. one of my, that's that's one what of my I favorite have. features. Yeah, I love uh, it. Mine is a, uh, a CY model. Oh, very nice. Yeah, older, like your other one over there, built uh -huh. in 42. Uh -huh. This is the newer generation right and this here. This one's actually a larger. You can see it's actually a, a D16 on the spindle cam lock. So. Yeah, okay. And then I've got basically the uh, twin brother. That's a 54 model. This is a 1952 model. And it's a 13 by 14, uh, by 15 and a half actual swing, but it's called yeah. a 13 inch by 30 Monarch. Got an Axelson back there. Um, guess what this is? Guess what brand this is? This is uh, American, American, no, let's see. I think it's a Monarch. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, it's a Monarch. The guy knows his machines. I'm trying to get back here. I'm a little bigger than you. There we go. And this is later yeah. model. You can see he's got 1500 RPM. That's a nice. I, I think this is a 16, which actually swings about 18, I, I believe, by 54. This is, that's actually a pretty nice machine. Got some custom made jaws on here that need, would need to be replaced or new vice. But, yeah. Okay. And look at the look at the size of the quill on this. Oh yeah, and it looks like a number four Morse taper yeah, in there. <laughs> yeah. So 
<laughs> so yeah, it's pretty got good a lot right. of beef to it. Um, See if I can get through here. Cincinnati. This is an 18 by 72 Cincinnati, and it's got a little bitty. It's got a little bitty eight inch chuck on there. Uh -huh. Now, is this what they call a tray top? It is a tray top, and you know <laughs> you gotta, exactly. Now yeah. you know why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other one was a tray top. But all three of the, the these Cincinnati's I've got in here are all tray tops. Okay. Uh, yeah. Top of the tail. There's socks, a shell, and I've got to do a little work on the. Uh, very similar to the one I showed you at the other shop. Yeah, okay. Sheldon Lane. Uh, they need some work, so it's it's down the priority list. But it does have the slide that where the handles travel with the slide. Yeah. And uh, uh, and the large dials and such, which was made to be a precision tool room. That's uh, a nice nice feature on there. Absolutely. Good look at the uh, that Monarch right there. We're gonna yeah. slip back out the way we came. All right. What's that one back that's there? That's an Axelson, actually, and that, okay. a lot of people don't know them, but actually, those were very fine machines too. I seen two similar in size at the uh, Tennessee Valley Railroad. They have two that they run. Very nice. Yeah. So a lot of times the companies, when somebody wanted a bigger swing, they said, "Well, we make a we make a 24 inch," and they said, "Well, we need a 32 inch," and they said. No problem, we can make that. And then they put a riser block in there, and you can see mm -hmm. under the headstock. Those are actually that's that's factory done. Actually, yeah, it comes from the factory. Yes, built that way. That's common. That a lot of yeah. the companies did that when the load carrying capabilities uh, didn't matter as much. They just needed to have the the added swing, and that's a Monarch too yeah. as well. What's do you know the size of that one there? That looks to be a. 22 actual swing. Well, it's got the nameplate on it. Yeah. Some of the newer ones hid the nameplates, but this one has it on there. Well, this is about the size. 22 and a half, 20 catalog name, and a 22 and a half actual swing. So, man, I nailed that one. That's getting close to the size I'd like to try to hunt for my shop. I'd really like to have a, you know, somewhere around 25 inch. I wanted 144 inch uh, bed length, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to fit it in the shop. So, I was kind of looking around the you know 70 to 90 mm -hmm. 96 inch bed length but that's that's pretty nice right there put a new paint job on that thing this is a little smaller i think this is a, a 16 that swings 18 and a half i believe yeah and this is a newer one that doesn't have the tag over there i'd have to measure that but yeah that's, that's about 96 the, that's a yeah. 96 there this is about the bed length that i think i could comfortably fit in there if i wanted to stuff one in the shop a lot of people don't realize the different what made a lot of people say why do you why do you like monarch why do you like what a lot of people don't realize is they they actually put better bearings more precision bearings in the spindles more precision bearings in the you know uh, anchor in the screw shafts feed shafts gear shafts that's what made them better they also did a little better on the alignment uh on the castings and the flatness and things like that and that's kind of what differentiates between some of the lower cost machines it wasn't just that they were heavier um, it was that they were one more precision built. The gears were built to a higher standard. Screws mm -hmm. were built to a higher standard. Everything and was a high standard. It really was. That, that. It really, and of course, that's the reason why they cost three times as much as you know some of the other machines. But if you only need to hold you know plus or minus a thousandth, you know you could get by with a lot less machines. Well, I, I read a nice write up on uh, the Monarch Machine Company, and they they put a lot of engineering and effort into their lathes. They wanted to build the world-class world class lathes that would last a lifetime. Well, having run about 50 of them, I can tell you they did. So. <laughs> but I tell you what, uh, you know, Pratt and Whitney, and uh, they, you hardly see any of those, but those were very, very, very nice machines. Uh, some of the European machines were outstanding that you know they weren't that popular here in the states but they were outstanding i got this 12 by 24 uh, excuse me that's a 12 by 36 model 55 gallmeyer livingston it was built from 1950 to i believe 1956. this had a uh, rebuild for the government we actually bought it from a government contractor and it had a rebuild i think in the 80s new electrics and redid the hydraulics and such like that push still got the old original push buttons and such that one looks like it's ready to go. Huh? It, it actually is. It's absolutely yeah. ready to go. That'd be a nice size machine to have there. This blue marble saw is sold. Uh, this Johansson. This is one people are not familiar with. They made them in several sizes. Some of them had, you see you got the table elevation. Yeah. You actually got the column elevates. The table elevates power. You have power quill feed even had auto tapping cycle on the thing and 
if you want to spin it around and use use it like knee, a, yeah use it like a radial the, arm yeah you spin it around and it is a radial arm and it's got auto locks and you can see the ram slides in and out on a, mm -hmm. a roller affair yeah and uh cool yeah this is a uh, as you can see here uh this is a 10 horsepower uh with a uh, gearbox and you can see the gearing goes from 43 rpm to 1060 and uh it's got a number five taper i believe it's not a four it's bigger than a four so it's a yeah yeah that you looks agree like a, yeah looks like a five morse taper yeah absolutely so it's i mean it's it, it, if you want a real, if you want a real, real, real machine, so you got it on a, you got it on a short side, and you say, oh, I need to do something that's four feet tall into the shaft, yeah. being rotated over here offside. A lot of people put the knee to the edge, so they've got you know clamping all up and down the side. Yeah. Big, big, and this will this will rise up another, uh, I think, twelve or fourteen inches. Oh, really? Yeah. So this yeah. goes up a lot higher. You get the column there. To Absolutely, raises. and it's power on the column too. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, right. this is a little history for you guys. We bought this machine out of Bridgeport Milling Machine Company. This was a, these are the original fixtures there. They've got a high speed uh, on one of their high speed mill heads. They've got a, a diamond cup wheel on here, and they actually were doing grinding on this. And they built this machine themselves. Wow! This is a, this is a Bridgeport here, <laughs> out of Bridgeport Machine Company. We bought so they, several machines. So they out made there. their own grinder out they of. They made mill. their own grinder out of a mill. Cool. Absolutely. Got this current right. trekker. This is uh, this is the size machine I need at work for doing all them big heavy keyways that I mill. So we'll be on the lookout for something like this and try to get a hold of a. What's the trunk capacity on your Audi? Uh, oh, yeah, I think I've just got it about way down with that Wilton Vice back there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can put much more in that. Come look at this uh, hardened checker I got. Okay. That one's a nice one. Auto index. Yeah. And you're familiar with the th auto threading on the back? No, not. I used to have the manual one. Watch, watch your hand there. So you tilted this down, and you had a collar that had the thread set that you wanted to run, like much like a half nut or like yeah. a lead screw tapping. Okay. So you drop it in, and as soon as it dropped in, it would go zing and tilt up and. Pop oh, back. Wow. And zing. This is what they had before they had auto threading cycles. Yeah. CNC machines and things like that. That's cool. And notice there's no, they had to have that because there's no lead screw threading on this. Mm hmm. Okay. Power feed via DC motor. Yeah. And unlike some other companies, their DC motors, I've never, I don't think I've ever had one go bad. There's a lot of guys out there that love running these. Yeah. The, they, they put great. The Hardings put great spindles uh, and great bearings in their machines too. Yeah, that's nice, man. I'm just Small taking fab a, equipment back yeah, here. We've yeah. got punch presses. We've got press brakes. Yep, I see. This little uh, pneumatic press brake is kind of an interesting design. They actually use a uh, an air diaphragm in the bottom, and when you hit the pedal, lets the air in. Boom! Right, it's an it's an up acting press, and it's a simple design. You can set you dial this up or down for your stop, and as it comes up, it hits a stop down there, right here actually. So this raises up. Boom! That's how you set it. So it's quite easy, and we've got the light curtains on it and all. Cool. PSI machinery. This is a South Bend, isn't it? That's a South Bend 10K. Yeah, that's a pretty one, man. Look at that it tag is. right it's there. Nice. Yep. That's the old a, man's got a, a hefty price on it, but it's <laughs> nice. I, you call me, I'll make a better deal on it. All There's right. another Joe Hansen, Joe Hansen, All Joe right. Hansen, a lighter, smaller version of the one I just described to you. There's a tree mill over there. Got a tree mill. There's a, uh, I've got some old bridge ports and probably do retrofits on a couple of these. I know and, we're, now one of these right here is in a friend of mine's shed out back. He's got the whole, it's the whole thing, man. It's even got the hydraulic unit. Yeah. Just the problem is, you, see, you know how many I got of those? Well, you, Too can't, many. Do, you can't do anything with them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the heads go off. Yeah. This is the, the mill's actually good. That's what the full Series 2 head looks like. Yeah. We got okay. the controls ripped off of this, but uh, this had the, the uh, power, uh, the double axis power feed on it and such. So, 
yeah this is another nice size uh kearney and trekker right here big boy i love these i love these big tables oh absolutely and the gearbox and then of course you mm -hmm. got the uh was that the twin screw yeah see this yep they put the t twin screws in them and uh say they do. yeah that one's got twin screws on it yeah so uh it's got the universal head and of course it's got the overarm yeah so you can do horizontal heavy horizontal milling too that's called a 320 tf-17 i've got another one back there i've got some uh, accelo mill i've got a lot of accelo mills i'm a big believer in them although the the parts are becoming a little more difficult to get but the the quality and how robust they were was actually incredible this one's got the attachment on there for doing Running your uh, running your dividing table head. and your dividing head absolutely. So you can cut mm -hmm. you can cut uh, helixes and screws on there. Yeah, I used to cut some like that for a chicken processing plant that helix the eviscerator in and out of the chicken to basically take the guts and everything out of it. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you this. I'll show you the Swiss made machine. Actually, Ross had some interest in. I think it's a fantastic machine. So it's a 24 by um, 80, probably 79 in actuality, but uh, uh, it's 24 by 80. Got the L taper, got inch metric threading. You want to see a beautiful gearbox? Look at that. You see those original? Those are the original cross grinds on that. Okay. Yeah, and look how wide it is. And it's a 20 horsepower, and it's a two and three quarter inch bore. So very some very desirable features got a hand wheel on the back for a i believe that's for uh, uh multi-pitch threads i think you index that around i believe you index are around when you if you want to do some certain uh, okay. multi-pitch threads or certain indexing yeah okay neat yeah this is a lodging yeah a log, there's another lodging shipway i got that one i've uh, got a uh we did a little work on the the compound and um, and I've got another one like it that runs, so I haven't finished up my work on this one yet. Um, another surface grinder. Got there. an Elb. That's a that's yeah. an I believe that's an Elb uh, or a Blum. That might be a Blum surface grinder. And uh, we got some hydraulic presses. You got a lot of stuff around here. I don't even know what it is. There's, <laughs> now there's a nice Arbor press right yeah, here. Yeah, those are good. Sweet. One, those are good ones. I, I love them. This one right here, have you seen this right here? Here's a thread roller. No, I haven't. Yeah, look close. Okay. I'm gonna turn the light on so you can see there. Oh, is that making, uh, for making uh, hardware? That's for making, yep. This You drop it on there and this thing comes up and this is actually, I think this is actually works on an eccentric. Oh, it works on an eccentric. They drive both of these and they're timed and then they, and then they push up, er, goes to a stop, the right depth, yep. and because they're timed, They'll roll that thing and it'll, you know, as it's rolling the threads, it'll tend to spin it. Yeah, yeah. But it'll spin it just a little bit and then by that time they're at the, the mm -hmm. root diameter and then they back off. Yeah. So, yeah. I've, I've seen that operation before. Yeah, I like this guy right here. And that's a that's a greener. Awesome. I will tell you a better one, though, that you want to look for. And I'll tell you why. This is okay. Mm -hmm. See this distance here? Yeah. Try to find the one that's square and and uh, try to get that because it's easier for mountain tooling too. Okay. I'm just saying, the Famco. <laughs> yeah. Is this a Famco? No, that's a green. I've got uh, some Famcos and I recommend those. I believe that's what they were, Famcos. Okay. They were basically that same size. A Logan lathe got there. Got a Logan lathe with, a, the turret. with the turret on there, absolutely. Yeah. Mighty turn. Got a mighty turn. Somebody decided to do a grind out on it, you know. <laughs> Instead of uh, trying to find a bigger Instead machine, of buying a bigger one, yeah. they put a grind on it. And we're doing a little work on a little south bend here, refurbishing. Okay. Not a rebuild, but a refurbish. But yeah. So that's going to finish out the the tour here at the uh, at the warehouse with all the the uh, heavy machinery. And I just want to thank Patrick for uh, giving us the tour. And, My pleasure. Yeah. And. Uh, letting us see everything so if, if anybody's watching this has, has any interest in any of this equipment i'll have his uh information in the video de description down below so that you guys can contact him about any of this equipment all right guys we'll see you later